Hi everyone, Susan Brady here. Thank you for joining me. A question that I get asked frequently is what test should I get for screening for osteoporosis? And I think this is a great question because there are definitely things that can be picked up in simple blood work and your analysis that can be indicators or predictive factors for the risk of bone loss and osteoporosis. <laughs> So some of the routine tests that I feel should be done are one, a CBC or a complete blood count. And the things that I look for in a CBC as kind of a window into bone health are things like red blood cell count, um, hemoglobin and hematocrit. And so these are markers for anemia and both pernicious anemia, which is due to a B12 deficiency, as well as chronic iron deficiency anemia can both increase your risk for bone resorption or bone loss and therefore increase, increase your risk of osteoporosis. And anemia and osteoporosis share common risk factors such as nutritional deficiency, poor nutrient absorption in the stomach and in the gut, as well as inflammation. So another thing I look for on the CBC is the white blood count, as well as the neutrophils and the lymphocytes, because these things give us insight into immune function and infection and inflammation. And we know that inflammation can have a negative impact on bone remodeling, which of course then leads to bone loss. I look at calcium levels and not because it gives me an indication as to potential calcium deficiency or the state of your bones, but, but because it does screen for malnutrition or other diseases such as bone diseases, kidney disease, parathyroid disease, cancers. But it's not going to tell you if you have osteoporosis or losing bone. However, can give you insight to see if there is another underlying disease that can then um, lead to osteoporosis. So another thing I look for is fasting glucose levels. So what we know is higher fasting blood glucose levels have been associated with an increased risk of osteoporosis because it impacts the bone's ability to form new bone. And chronic high blood sugar levels along with high insulin levels can also create inflammation. I like to do a lipid panel. So looking at cholesterol and triglycerides, higher total cholesterol levels, as well as higher triglycerides or those fats in the blood, they've been associated with a greater risk of osteoporosis. And the other thing we know is the HDLs or those so-called good cholesterol. HDLs have been linked to better bone mineral density, especially in the spine. Um, Tests that I like to do or have added to the CBC or the lipid panel, things like vitamin D. We all know how important vitamin D is to our bones. I generally like to see vitamin D levels between 50 and 70. I think it's important to get a 24-hour urine calcium test as well. So this will give you an idea as to whether there's a problem with calcium absorption in the intestines, or if you're losing too much calcium through the kidneys. I also like to do a test called a homocysteine. And although there's been varying research on the relationship to bone health, there has been some studies showing that a link between homocysteine levels and osteoporosis. And higher homocysteine levels can be indicative of inflammation, most often associated with like cardiovascular disease, blood clots, strokes, but it can also be a sign of certain B vitamin deficiencies. So deficiencies in B12, B6, folic acid. And these B vitamin deficiencies can, can come about because of a dietary deficiency of these vitamins, particularly in people who are vegans or vegetarian, or it can be because of mal malabsorption of these nutrients, which then can indicate that maybe your digestive tract isn't as healthy as it should be and your gut's not as healthy as it should be.
And there are studies that suggest that B vitamins have a protective role in bone health. So it's important to get an understanding of B vitamin status. I also like to look at a hemoglobin A1C. So we talked about fasting blood glucose in the CBC. But what a hemoglobin A1C does is it actually measures your average blood sugar levels over the course of three months. And although this is another one where the impact of the hemoglobin A1C on bone health is kind of conflicting, there are several studies that show a higher hemoglobin A1C level can inhibit bone formation and increase the risk of fractures. I think it's important to test uh, the status of your parathyroid gland as well as the status of your thyroid. And making sure your parathyroid gland is healthy is critical to bone health because this gland secretes parathyroid hormone and parathyroid hormone regulates how much calcium you have in your blood. And if you have something called hyperparathyroidism, the parathyroid gland is secreting too much hormone, which in turn can pull calcium out of your bones. Um, so you have more in your blood for the other functions that calcium do, such as nerve conduction, muscle contraction. Thyroid function tests are important because both hyperthyroidism or overactive thyroid and hypothyroidism or underactive thyroid can impact your bone. And it's important to not only look at TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone, but also T4 and T3, which are the hormones that the thyroid actually produces that then goes on to affect our cells and our metabolism. Another one I like to look at is something called a C-reactive protein. And this is just another marker for general inflammation in the body. And again, if you have inflammation, it can certainly be contributing to bone loss. And then lastly, I do recommend doing bone biomarkers, which give an insight into active bone resorption, which then help can help to determine if you might um, have an increased rate of bone turnover and bone loss. The one that I generally recommend is called a CTX or a C-telepeptide crosslinks test. And there are many different ones out there. But one of the reasons why I like to do this test is it can help us to determine whether your bone loss is stable. So what I mean by that is you could have osteoporosis, but if your bone loss is stable, you are not actively losing more bone. And that's a good thing, right? But if you are actively losing bone, these tests can pick up on that and then you can find a way to stop it. And so we use these markers for not only looking to see if there's active bone loss, but then we can use them to monitor bone loss um, to see if we can slow it down. So these are really effective tests for screening both in the premenopausal woman or early menopausal woman before any bone scanning has been done can uh, has been done, and and then we can you know use preventative measures to ensure optimal bone health, or they can be done in a postmenopausal woman to help determine if there's an underlying condition that may be accelerating bone loss, such as a nutrient deficiency or anemia or hyperparathyroidism or inflammation. And, you know, honestly, they're just important overall markers of health and health predictors. And I truly believe that everything is interconnected in the body. And we have seen so many studies that indicate that there is a relationship of many of our chronic degenerative diseases like cardiovascular disease and digestive diseases and diabetes with osteoporosis. So monitoring through these markers I outlined above can help to avert or prevent many potential health conditions that will no doubtably also impact your bones. Reach out if you have any questions. I'm gonna put a link to a handout that lists all these tests in the blog and comment section of this video. And I hope you have a great day.